The diamond is a ship, my lads, and the nearest to reach is bound. And the key it is a garnished wee bonny lassies round. Captain Thompson gives the orders to sail the ocean wide. For the sun never sets, my lads, nor darkness dims the sky. And it's cheer up, my lads, that your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond goes a fishing for the whale. Along the key at Peter Keed, and the lassies turn a ruin. With our shells I'll pull the rune, the man sat tears running in doom. Well, then he weep, my bonny lass, though you'll be left to him. For the nose will grow on Greenland's ice afore we change your mind. And it's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond goes a fishing for the whale. He's a health and a resolution, likewise, your lies is one. Three cheers to the butt that omen throws, and the diamond ship will fail. Well, we're the truths that are so the fight, and the get so the blue. For now we get back to Peter here, we'll hey, sweethearts anew. And it's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond goes fishing for the whale. It'll be brecht, be the anech, when the green land lads come home. We're shipping up with oil, my lads, and money to our name. We'll mark green as for the rock and the blankets for the tear. Fin every lass and Peter Heed sing hush up, my dear. And it's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond goes a fishing for the whale. And it's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond goes a fishing for the Thank you very much. Um, we're now going to sing you another wee song, and uh, it's going to be uh, a Charlie Allen, if I was fae Methlick, and uh, it's a bit of him called Little Airda, and I got this for the great singing of uh, Kerry Mears, Joe Aitken. Um, so yes, this is Lonely in the Bothy, and if you can it, feel free to join and sing along. <laughs> Back a tractor gear through his me why he could blue. Therefore I got all the work to do that suited me just fine. And I bid in a little timmer bothy. Well, the cold winds they blow in on eth my timmer bothy door. And the mooses they juke in and out the knot holes in the floor. But that's near the worst to be in here, discomforts I can thaw. For it's lonely a night in the bothy. Well, I sort the money's fancy balls and pit them out to Perth. And I keen the time, the best showman that ever walked the earth. But for now the judges are we, and for now the sellers are one. It's back to my little Tamar Bothy. Well, the cold winds they blow in on earth, my Tamar Bothy. And the mooses they juke in and out the knot holes in the floor. But that's near the worst to be in here, discomforts I can thaw. For it's lonely at night in the bothy. I'm on the loose, and every night 
I can be found at Wally's public house But you canna blame a man for taking comforts for he can For it's lonely and echt in the bothy Well, the cold winds they blow in and if my timber bothy door And the mooses they juke in and do the knot holes in the floor But that's nae the worst to be in here Discomforts I can throw For it's lonely and echt in the bothy Ay, it's lonely Thank you. We get a good, hearty welcome to our host tonight, Alistair Heather and Len Penny. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and you're all very welcome to our third annual Scots Language Awards. We are online this year, but after all the duel and drama the last twa year, we're finally back here live in person at the Gardine Theatre Dundee. <laughs> we have got a better air show for you tonight. All right, lads, we do indeed have a better coming up. We have more than 50 nominees up for a dozen awards tonight, most of them joining us here in the room. Abdi that's here and Abdi that's joining us online is playing a pair in our collective effort to put Scots back where it belongs as one of the official, recognised and respected leads of Scotland. Yeah. 100%. That is what we're here today this evening, to ease up all the good folk that are pitting in this hard dark to make sure that Scots is safeguarded. It's my third shot at day in these awards, which is a privilege in itself, but it gives us sick pleasure to see all these new names and faces as nominees, as award winners, as presenters every year. It's dead exciting. Um, I ken dozens of folk as well. They're out there doing great things for Scots that didn't even mark the lang list for this year's awards, which tells us that Scots is mayor and mayor in a healthier place in our culture. Covid hasn't been good to our communities, but it hasn't slowed down the Scots revival. We see for nominations this year, Oh, Did you right? just take my script? No. <laughs> Get used to that, maybe. <laughs> we see for nominations this year that Hunters has been done online for Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, websites, podcasts, as well as the Queen of Books out. We maybe haven't been getting the blathers in in person for a while, but you have kept up the fact with the lead. And the night, we salute your efforts. A hundred percent. So you's watching at home. You can be part of this. We are absolutely online. You fire your comments, your feedback into YouTube, into Twitter, into Facebook, whatever you're watching the stream. Have we iPad off stage there? I can check in with I can see that a bunch of folk are already in touch for America, for the North East. And that's it so far. So have the else. <laughs> Feel free to join in. Fire your comments. I'll see them. I'll give you a shout out here for the stage. Now, we ken that all the nominees in the room are getting a wee bit nervous. They're keen to get on stage, keen to find out if they've won on the hint the night. Before we get to our first award, let's hear another tune. This evening, with performances for poets, sangsters and musicians. But now let's hear it again for Ellie Beaton and Gilly O'Flaherty. <laughs> Hello again, we went a while for a while. Uh, I'm going to give you a bothy ballad. Um, a thud gilly. So this is the Buchan Plumen. Come, my jolly plumen, lads that work among the grun. Come and listen to my story if you want to hear some fun. I'm near as young as I used to be, some say I've had my fling. But I feel just like a ten year old, and I begin to sing. Oh, lull to fallu, da lie, do to da lu, da lay. I'll cry your horse, I'll sort your note, I'll beg a rack astray. I'm as happy as a lark, fade on to dark, singing another day. Oh, lull to fallu, da lie, do to da lu, da lay. 
at Ellen Fian mere get new listen for thy say. A man is spirit if I could work a pair a ten or day. If I could fall muck we a man, he'd fairly got me gape. Says I, a man, for I come fae. We fall muck we a grape. Oh, look the falloon, a lie do to the loon, a lay. I'll cry your horse, I'll sort your nout, I'll beg a ruck a stray. I'm as happy as a lark, fae dawn to dark, singing a the day. Oh, look the falloon, a lie do to the loon, a lay. I was bothered for a sax month to place the card balcaren. For now I get him the bothy lads, they teed me for a bairn. We horny hands, they ate by up spuds, the bothy fleet was hoppet. We sharny beats, I trampet the spuds. And said, I like mine, chop it. Oh, love the falloon, I lie do to the loo, lay. I'll cry your horse, I'll sort your nout, I'll beg a rock a stray. I'm as happy as a lark, fade on the dark, singing a the day, oh, love the falloon, a lie do, to the loon, a lay. The night I married Mary Ann, I got maced off a foo. When the minister started to tie the knot, there was a hullabaloo. He says, my man, fit is your name. And have you got the ring? Losh, you should have seen on Manny's face when I began to sing. Oh, love the falloon, a lie do to the loon, a lay. I'll cry your horse, I'll sort your nout, I'll beg a rock a stray. I'm as happy as a lark, fade on to dark, singing a the day. Love the falloon, a lie do to the loon, a lay. Thank you very much. And uh, this last song that myself and Gilly are going to play for you as an echt is about a young lad that gings in the hope of marking plenty siller and he goes awa to the Baffin Bay in the coast of Greenland uh, to Mark Siller we whaling. Um, but this is kind of his story of how he does it. So this is Farewell to Tarwathy. <laughs> And the dear lands of Kerimen, I bid ye farewell. I am bound now for Greenland and ready to sail in the hopes to find the riches in the hunting the whale. Farewell to my comrades as while we must part. Likewise, the dear lassie. For first one my heart The Callans o Greenland My love will not chill No longer the absence The more loving she'll feel Who are ship is we'll rig it Ready to sail The crew they are anxious To follow the wheel For the ice makes to float And the stormy winds blow For the land and the ocean Is covered with snow The Cal Coast of Greenland is barren and bare. Ne sea time nor harvest is ever came there. The birds there sing sweetly on mountain and dale, but there is not a birdie to sing to the whale. There is no habitation for man to stay there. 
And the king of the country is the fierce Greenland bear. There'll be no temptation to tarry long there. We are ship bumper full, we will homeward Fear wheel to Tarawathi and a Jew moment hill, and the dear lands of Kerimen die bedgy fear wheel. I am bound now for Greenland and ready to sail in the hopes to find the riches in a hunting the Thank you very, very much, Gilly O'Flaherty. That was incredible, incredible. Good news, we have mayor locations of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I can just say, so after this watching him, please chuck in the comments. Your feedback folk are loving the set, they're loving the tunes. Ishbel is saying that her twelve year old bairn is uh, making her uh, making the toys dance to the tunes, which is lovely. We've got hello for Jackie in Nova Scotia, uh, David for Crammond, Littlest Chicken, any of our nominees are saying hello for Glasgow Town. <laughs> ah, good, 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 uh, good vibe in the room for Littlest Chicken here. And uh, Feshkar Ma for Glen Shee, that's Alex in Glen Shee. No. I'm delighted to say we knew here a word for a Holyrood representative. Put your horns together for Dunfermline Shirley Ann Somerville, MSP, Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good evening everyone and it is a real pleasure to be able to be here tonight and I'd like to congratulate Hands Up for Trad and the supporting partners for all their hard work in getting us here tonight almost all together but certainly always uh, together in spirit even if some of us are still watching online. So the Scots Language Awards I think are so important to raise the profile of the Scots language to celebrate our crea creativity and our talent and I was thinking when I was coming up here about why this was so important to me personally and I suppose as that wee lassie Ficard and Den who wasn't allowed to blether with her pals when she was in her skill, like she was when she was at home. She couldn't really understand that, but she, she knew what it meant. She knew she was not speaking properly. She was talking slang. She was embarrassed about the way she was brought up to speak. And yet here we are, that wee lassie Ficard and Den, now as well as being the Education and Skills Cabinet Secretary, the Education and Skills and Scots Language and Gaelic Cabinet Secretary. And that is a real pride for me. That we can come here tonight, we can celebrate our language together, take pride in our language. So I want to say a huge congratulations to all the nominees and eventual winners tonight. You inspire me to now have faith and confidence in the way that I speak when I'm at home and for me to teach my girls that as well when they're grown up. So I'm really looking forward to seeing who the, the achievers are tonight, who the winners are, but to everybody who inspires all of us to carry on speaking our Scots and be proud of that. Thank you and have a great evening. Cheers. Okay, okay, are we all ready for our first award? Okay, <laughs> hold on, we went twice for this, right? Are we all ready for our first award? Wait a minute, I like it. Len? Our first award is for Scots Project of the Year, sponsored by Scots House. The nominees are
<laughs> Getting sorted. Okay. How are you doing? Great. Okay, so Matthews, can he be here tonight? He's asked me to say a few words on his behalf. And uh, Scots House, a wee bit about Scots House. Scots House is a Scots learning and creativity project for Burns and young people. Scots House launched a brand new animation, A Coulter's Candy, for early years just yesterday. And a horror and ghost story in Scots competition for secondary last week there and all. Scots House is proud to sponsor the Scots Project of the Year Award 2021. It's a strong leap this year, busy with innovation, advocacy and grassroots community projects. The projects are based all over Scotland, north to south and online as well. There's people in this league that have had to throw hostility and indifference for their work in Scots. But nothing daunted, Albany Nominator has turned Scots to the next level and succeeded in making a wider audience think about Scots in exciting new ways. And the winner is... Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> I'm absolutely thrilled to receive the award of Scots Project of the Year, um, which I accept with the greatest of pleasure on behalf of the staff and the governors of the dictionaries of the Scots language. I reckon this is the first award we have ever received uh, and it really does mean a great deal to all of us. I'd like to thank uh, Scots House for sponsoring this award, the Scottish Government for their ongoing financial support for the work that we do, uh, the Hands Up for Trad team for organising this wonderfully uplifting and now annual event, and everybody who voted for our Scots Dictionary for Schools app. Thank you. I'd like also to congratulate each of the other amazing projects in this category and those that didn't make it to the shortlist. Keep going. The work that you do really does matter. Thank you. Smashing, smashing, smashing. Our next award is incredibly important. Scott Burns Book of the Year. I've sat down and made the point of enjoying every any of the books on this leet and they are just cracking. Aye, uh, they are about your reading level. <laughs> <laughs> Nominations for Scots. Please welcome Faith the Sponsors, the Scottish Government, Shirley Ann Somerville, MSP, Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills. Yes, yeah, me again, but I promise this is the last time. You're all right. Last politician. The winner of the uh, award tonight for the Scots Bairns Book of the Year is The Glaswegian Gruffalo's Ween by Elaine C. A video fee were award winner Elaine C. Smith. Hi, it's Elaine C. Smith here, and I just want to say a huge thank you to uh, the Scots Language Awards for this amazing honour award. Um, I am absolutely thrilled and delighted. You can keep your BAFTAs for me, this is much more important. 
um, to receive, even to be nominated in such a great category of children's books. I want to say a huge thank you to James Robertson and Matthew Fett and all the team at Ichiku. This is going to be like an Oscar speech, by the way. Um, but they persuaded me that I would be able uh, to to do the Glasgow Gruffalo in the first place. And then to do uh, the Glasgow Gruffalo's Wayne was just uh, great to do, particularly because it was about wee girl. I want to say a huge thank you to Julia Donaldson as well for writing the original books and the beautiful illustrations in them and, and such great stories for kids, um, for children. Sorry, I should say it properly. Um, and uh, I was thrilled actually to get to work with Julia earlier on this year because we've filmed uh, for CBBS, we've filmed um, Princess Mirabelle, one of our other books. So uh, it was great. I actually got uh, Julia to sign my uh, Glasgow Gruffalo's Wayne copy. So that should be worth a few bob as uh, things are coming up. Anyway, um, I hope uh, most importantly that children enjoy it. I need to get on and read it now and uh, I'll put it online and everything like that. But I'm absolutely thrilled that it has um, managed to persuade people that it is worth um, voting for and uh, getting an award like this. But most important for me in all of this is that uh, Scots language and colloquialisms and local dialect are being kept alive by these stories and these books. Uh, I've been fortunate in my career to travel all over Scotland and to discover the different dialects and, and ways of speaking. And there is a vast, hugely vast, rich language out there in Scotland that for many, many years we were taught, I was of the generation, and my, particularly from my mother as well, who were taught to cringe at our own dialects and our own colloquialism, as if in some way it was slovenly and bad speech. Well, it ain't. It's rich. And I've come across it a few times even with the Glasgow Gruffalo and Gruffalo's Wayne as well, with people saying, oh, I don't like my kids doing those, knowing those words, but they are very funny. And you're thinking, wait a minute, these are tremendous descriptions, dis d tremendous points of history as well in the language of the area and the country that we live in. So uh, Lang Mager Lumbreek, as they say to the Scottish Language Awards and well done to all the winners and all the people that were nominated tonight. All the best. That's our first two awards off. I think it's time for a wee performance now. Please welcome to the stage, Anna Stewart. some sweary words in this piece so the two-year-old may be bedtime now <laughs> so this is an extract from the title story of my short story collection called pleasure land the narrator is a character called derek pleasure land the day we went to pleasure land et help mum to piss off fuck you fuck off with my life after we got off the bus she said she was only trying to fix my collar because it was twisted under my coat. I was like, it's okay, don't worry about it, let's just get inside. We'd come on the 73, all the wifey Dundee to our growth. Me and mum sometimes go on day trips because we didn't live together anymore and Ed didn't like it when she comes to mine. Some people have said, my mum's highly strung, she's got really deep wrinkles, she always looks in pain and her hair's just loads of straggly bits hanging on her face. If mum was in a Francis Coppola film, he would say, for fuck's sake, Jean, stop hiding behind your friggin' hair. Cause he's an American, he would say friggin' instead of fucking. <laughs> Roll some balls before you next come on my set. Time means friggin' money, Jean, and you're throwing men money down the friggin' drain. That's it, M docking your wages. Until you get a mere hardball attitude, you're on half pie, and no amount of whinging to the guild of Italian American actors is gonna change that fact. On Messet Jean, unions mean jack shit. Italian American actors can be in their own union if they want. I saw it on Wikipedia and Mum's got Italian family, so she'd be in that in. <laughs> Mum was totally greeting when I moved out for hers. She said any mum would do the same and that I was a man now and it was time for me to stand on my own twa feet. I got on the van 
with this man while I was rolling his eyes and winking at my mum. He was laughing a bit too. Then he said, see you, Jean. Didn't worry. I'll get him settled in. Anyway, the day we went to Pleasureland was good because everyone to a pound on the puggies. But then I spent it trying to win a cuddly toy on you know those crane machines with a metal claw. I caught Donald Duck, but then the claw let him go and I had to tip the machine to get him out. I was like, well, how come they pretend that you'll win a cuddly toy and then no let you hang? But mum said it's the why of the world. So I kicked the machine and shouted, fuck the why of the world. And the manager looked our and mum was like, let's do something else then, because she was trying to change the subject as usual. We went on the bumper cars, even though we were both too big for it. We were the only ones on the track, so we just kept bumping into one another. Mum said that Frank bloke by help me move house would come and pick us up so we wouldn't hate to get the 73 back to Dundee. I thought this was totally excellent because I felt tired and that 73 bus sometimes gives me the dry boke. <laughs> he beeped his horn about a million times outside Pleasureland. He looked dead happy and I thought it was probably because he'd had the sea air. That's what happens when you have the sea air. You get dead happy and then in about five minutes you fall asleep. But he did the fast asleep because he said he'd tap with her fish and chips and I was like, yes, this is well cool because fish and chips in our bro's dead expensive and I can't he'd probably pay. Frank asked me what my favourite things are. I tell him my favourite colours are definitely orange because I'm a Dundee United supporter and we're total winners because we won the cup final. He said he supported Dundee and then I can't he was a Protestant. Dundee supporters are Protestants and United supporters are Catholics. A lot of people didn't ken that and they end up wanting to support United because it's a better team and then finding out the canny because their mums didn't go to proper church. <laughs> My mum doesn't go to church. My granny did, but she's dead now, so me and mum are probably agnostic. Agnostic means you didn't believe in anything and you can't be arsed arguing. <laughs> There's this man called Richard Dawkins who wrote a book called The God Delusion that I saw on telly. He's well annoyed at people who believe in God and wants Obdi to stop going on about it all the time and tell me Bairns to believe in God when we didn't even care if there's a chocolate teapot in the sky. <laughs> when we got in mums, Frank put the telly on and it was dead good because much of the day was on. I was like, yes. Frank said he wanted a tinny instead of a cup of tea and he took his shoes off and put his feet on my mum's favourite poofy. I thought I'd better give him a wee word to the wise and I said, here Frank, you better make sure my mum doesn't see you on her favourite poofy because she'll go mental. But when mum came through, she sat next to Frank and she didn't say anything about his feet on her poofy. I thought that was pretty weird. Then something really creepy happened. My mum took her shoes off and put her feet up next to the drivers and their feet were touching and I was like, yuck, this is disgusting. I said, mum, you can't just go around putting your feet on van drivers. You shouldn't be touching like that. And then mum was like, Frank's my friend. He's not just a van driver, Derek. And then that Frank, he put his hand on my mum's arm and he was laughing and rubbing it and saying they were more than friends. I was like, what the frig is going on here? This is totally sick. Are you a sicko or what? Then that really sear breathing came on. Mum was like, calm down, Derek. But I had to push past her and run out. I ran down the streets for like ever just to stop my chest pain. But then I got that other pain for when you run too much. When I got to the flat, I hung on the door handle for ages till my heart stopped beating so much because of the running and my hand stopped shaking so I could get the key in the lock. It was a really weird day because it had been dead good at Pleasureland and then with the fish and chips, but then I found that out and it was like huge. I think it's really weird that old people start going out with each other when they're old. It's like, what's the point? You're already old, so what's going on? <laughs> then the most weird thing happened. That Frank bloke came banging on my door and I was like, there's no way I'm letting him in. So I hid in the bog. He came in anyway and he was saying, Derek. Derek, and that really creepy sing-sang way that's like what the baddies do in horror films. <laughs> like Jack Nicholson in The Shining when he's looking for Wendy, except I wasn't Wendy, and Frank has too much a gut to be Jack Nicholson. <laughs> then he must have just kent I was in the bog, because he starts thumping the door really slow with his foot, like thump, then wait about a minute, then another thump. I was well freaked out, and I thought, I am not saying anything. And then he was like, Derek, I ken you're in there, and all that usual stuff for the films. Then he says, now listen you, you wee shite. Me and your mum just want a quiet life, and if that means you fucking half out the equation, then that's fine. 
You're welcome to come round and visit, but you'll not be doing your usual pushing round. If anybody's doing any pushing round, it'll be me for now on, you hear me? Then he kicked the door and I was like, yeah, because I thought he might break it down. It was pure greeting and ahin, but I didn't think he could hear me. And he was like, your mum's put up with your shite for far too long. There's fuck all wrong with you, a good kick up the arse wouldn't he fix. And from now on, expect to feel my foot right up your arse, pal, because you're no getting away with your capers anymore. Tomorrow, you'll be doing that job centre and it'll be ruined in the morning to make sure of it. Name your pleasure land for you, pal. Then he banged on the bog door twice with his fist and Ahan went quiet. I waited for ages before I came out just to make sure he'd gone. Then I went in my bedroom and started packing up all my stuff because I thought, this maniac's totally after us and he kens where I live, so I better get out be here. But then I must have just fallen asleep on the bed mid-pack because when I woke up the next day, I still had my pleasure land clays on and my bag was only half full and loads of my stuff had fallen on the flare. Did you miss us? <laughs> <laughs> Our next award is for Scots Speaker of the Year, sponsored by the Scots Language Centre. Abdi in this category has been right out there, putting their Scots where Abdi can see it and gain us an example to follow. They tell us not to be fair to use for Scots, and more than that, they show us you can use Scots' only place. Here we have nominations for TikTok, Fit by Commentary, Mental Health Podcasts, Folk Music, and Traditional Storytelling. Perfect. Nominations for Scots Speaker of the Year, sponsored Andy McLaren, Iona Fife, Jackie Ross, and Paul Black. To present the award, please put your hands together for Erin Boyle. And the winner is, drum roll. Because it will take me this long to open an envelope. <laughs> Our winner is Iona Fife. Well, it's a total privilege to be able to get this award, but really, fit does an award mean when you're standing up here in front of a community of practice that's together in the flesh for the first time in our 18 months. I've never met half years in this room, but I feel like we all cane each other because we bide on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, five years ago, when I started off at the Royal Conservatory of Scotland, I was doing a course on Scott Song. Yet, if I would utter a word in Doric, I would hear an international onslaught of, what? Even in a folk music course. But now I feel more comfortable in my own skin to use my own language in any sort of platform, whether that be at a trade union meeting in London or in Aberdeenshire with my mother and father. And that's thanks to you, the community of practice that is the Scots language Twitter. No, I'm joking, it's not just on Twitter. But I must admit, it is a community of practice that pits us all together, whether that be on the Scots Discord or on our very own Twitter group chat. I think that what brings us all together tonight is our love for the lead and our love for being able to actually stand up and say that it is a language. So a huge thanks to the folk of our advice as well as Abdi here tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Now, we're really into the meetings. Another massive award coming up now is Scots Performer of the Year, sponsored by Trax, Traditional Arts and Culture Scotland. The nominees for Scots Performer of the Year are Rafa Fine by Bothy Bass, Erin Boyle, Hamish MacDonald, Len Penny, Louis Watson, 
and Nicola Black. <laughs> to present the award, please welcome for tracks, Mr. David Francis. So this award's for Adam that put the lead in front of folk in live performance, mostly music and storytelling and poetry. And as Iona was saying, it's guide night for, for big invisibility and credibility too. So I'm blithe to present the award for Scots Performer of the Year to Len Penny. <laughs> Fear about doing the presentations, I didn't even plan in to say, so I'm gonna be Ah, uh, well, right, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a trek, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a safe fact for a piece in jail, as my nanny would say. And um it's for them that are day what a day. And um I'm not gonna greet because I said I wouldn't, but I'm really grateful to everyone here. I'm grateful to Simon and to everyone at the Scots Language Awards for just even asking me to do this and then nominating me and then for everyone who voted me and for just, oh, I'm just gonna keep thanking people. Um, my family are just my absolute world. Uh, my mum and my dad and my brother and my sister and my nanny and my papa and then um, obviously them that's not here anymore but who are hopefully um, proud of me nonetheless. So. Um, Thank you all. <laughs> all right, please welcome to the stage Cameron Nixon and Rachel Campbell. I've forgotten, huh? Hello there. Good evening to you all. Rachel and I are delighted to be up here in Dundee for the Scots Language Awards. And we're going to kick things off with a song called Brewer Lad, all about this young laddie who's courting this young lassie for seven long years. And all of a sudden, she thinks, well, I much prefer a boy from Edinburgh, boo. So <laughs> off she goes. She goes off with this boy from Edinburgh, leaves the boy up in Perth. And um, he, decide, he thinks to himself, well, what on earth can I do with myself now? And so he decides to brew some beer, and uh, rightly so. So off he goes, brings some beer, and what happens? She comes running back. So this is a song called Brewer Lad. <laughs> Perth lived a bonny lad, a brewer to his trade, oh. He is courted Peggy Roy, a young and handsome maid, oh. We have followed it on my day, do do, we have followed it on my day, do. Well, he's courted her for seven long years, I fought to gain her favour. But thank him aloud, to in between, was swore that he would have her. It's will you gang along with me, and will you be my honey? It's will you gang along with me, and leave your brewer laddie? Oh, I will gang along with you, along with you, all right, oh. I'll gang with you to the ends of the earth, oh, spoke to the brewer lad, oh. We have followed it on my day, do do, we have followed it on my day, do. The brewer he come home between a spearin' for his honey. A feather he made this reply, she's no been here since Monday. Oh, was not that an uncle ploy with the only one be offended? To court me aloud for seven long years and leave him at the end of it. We have followed it on my day, do do, we have followed it on my day, do. She's rambled up, she's rambled down, she's rambled through Kirkcaldy. Money's time, she rude the day, she's jilted to brew her laddie. He's taken the course and a wise gain, the country has fled. Oh. He left his ark upon his back, no blanket on his bed. Oh. We have followed it on my day, do do, we have followed it on my day, do. Be it so, and let her go, for it shall never grieve me. I'm a lad that's free as you can see, a small thing will relieve me. There's this good fish and tea the sea that's ever yet was taken. I'll cast my net and try again, although I am forsaken. We have fallen out, little of my day, dum do, we have fallen out, little of my day, do. 
the brewer he set up in Perth And there he brewed strong ale oh, He's courted we another lass and tainer to him sell oh, You lovers all, oh, whatever you be, just let this be a warning Never slight your angel love for fear you get a worried We have fall out at Lombardite, do we have fall out at Lombardite? We have fall out at Lombardite, do we have fall out at Lombardite? We have fall out at Lombardite, do we have fall out at Lombardite? Thank you very much indeed. We're going to follow that now with a slower song called The Broom or the Cowden Nows. And hopefully some of you out there will know that and sing along to it. All about this young lad who is banished from the country and he longs to see the bonny broom, the flower, but also the loved one he's left behind. I think if I was her, I'd be raging because he, he prefers the flower over her. But anyway, this is The Broom or the Cowden Nows. Each morn to see my last come over the hill. She tripped the burn and ran to me. I met her we good will. Oh. The broom, the bonny, bonny broom, the broom o oh, the cowden Fain would I be in my own country, herding my feather. Heart fate that I should banish be gone way or hell and move because I lose the fairest lass that ever.
Gorgeous singing from you all. Thanks very much, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Us again. <laughs> Schools are the engine room of the recovery of our lead. And after that, Max Scott's pair of the curriculum in their classrooms deserves praise. But the next award is Scott's Teacher of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Qualifications Authority. Nominees for Scottish Teacher of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Becky Halliburton, St John's uh, Roman Catholic Academy. <laughs> Colin McKenzie, Traqueer Primary. <laughs> Irene Shearer, Cleffington Primary School. <laughs> Jane Hall, Stonehouse Primary. <laughs> Jeremy Murray, Took Primary. <laughs> Kerry Fraser, Perth High School. Rosie Burcham, Mayor's Academy. And Simon McMahon, St Andrews Primary. Please welcome for the Scottish Qualifications Authority, Robert Quinn. Hello, everybody. Um, it's fantastic to be able to join everybody in, in, in person this year, following on from last year's highly successful and innovative virtual event. It's our third year here as well, so we're hanging on to Alistair's coattails. Um, hopefully we'll beat them ultimately, but um, uh, we enjoy a good race. Anyway, despite the challenges presented by another 12 months of disruption in their lives, our, um, our young and not-so-young Scots speakers are, are going from strength to strength, with more and more schools and colleges offering SQA Scots language qualifications, and indeed more learners um, using their Scots to engage and create across all their subjects. Um, and the commitment of their dedicated and inspiring teachers, the, the work and ingenuity in their, in their classrooms and beyond is, is instrumental to attracting learners to sustain and develop their language um, and, and their hard work, the hard work of their teachers must not go unsung. So it's my really great honour to, tonight to present the Scotch Teacher of the Award to... Kerry Fraser from Perth High School. when you set the kids' homework to vote for you. So, <laughs> I actually did. So, I do first have to all say congratulations to everybody in the, the nominations. It was absolutely great to see um, what was going on in Scottish schools, all the exciting things. But I do have to give a really big shout out to Becky Halliburton, who also um, works in Perth and Kinross. Um, we have a podcast called Easily Read, where we talk about books and things. But her Scots week that she does at St John's is absolutely amazing and um, she should be get a big thumbs up for that. <laughs> it's absolutely imperative that we have um, that we're encouraging Scots in our classrooms because it's become cool again. We've got Len Penny on TikTok, we have, you know, I on a five, we've got all these exciting people. I literally was fangirling as I came in, as I saw Graham Armstrong. I was like, what? 
But what I will say as a teacher to all your writers, if you would like your um, books and writing to be used in classrooms, stop putting so much swearing in them <laughs> because we can't use them when, they're, when they have so much. But um, I, I, I applaud you anyway. But um, tonight I do have to dedicate this award to my dad who I sadly lost at Christmas time. He was my absolute Scottish rock and um, he'd be so proud. Um, the last time I got to speak to him, I'd written him a poem in Scots because it's what came out and um, I know he'd be very proud. So this one's for you, Dad. <laughs> Something we hear all the time in we're advocacy for Scots, uh, just for members of the general public, is there aren't enough Scots books out there. And for a long time, I think that was true, it wasn't that easy to go in and get, put, get into a bookshop and put your hands on a Scots book. But thanks to our next batch of nominees for Scots Book of the Year, sponsored by the Scottish Book Trust, mayor and mayor quality books in Scots are appearing all the time. So good on yous all. Cut out the sweary words though, eh? <laughs> the nominees for Scots Book of the Year are... Duck Feet, <laughs> Mother Tongue, The Jar Bains, The Young Team. Please welcome for award sponsors the Scottish Book Trust, Katrina Armstrong. to disagree with um, the, the last one. I think you should keep swearing. <laughs> okay, well, this is difficult. You've got one job, Katrine, one job. Okay, so the winner is The Young Team by Graham Armstrong. <laughs> I'm very nervous. <laughs> I didn't expect to win. Thank you very much. Um, Scots dialect was so important to me, and I remember right at the very beginning of my journey, I was a very confident Ned and Airdrie, but I was a very <laughs> nervous student in Stirling University. And uh, I remembered saying to a pal, you know, back at home, nobody sounds like me. I hate my voice. What a terrible thing to say, you know, but I did, and I felt that way. And um, she looked at me the way only a, a female pal can look, you know, and she said, honestly, your voice is the best thing about you. <laughs> and I, honestly. <laughs> and honestly, by the way, at 18 years old, I had no idea what she meant, do you know? And um, that's when I was 18. 10 years later, at 28, I'd be down in London signing the deal for the young team. And then in a few months later, The Guardian would describe that voice as dazzling poetry which uh, it's, it's been a surreal dream, guys. But the, the most important thing about voice is representation. You know, when I go into Berlin or schools and I get the look, because I'm, I'm a quiet guy now and I wear glasses and all that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, they're looking for that kind of inauth inauthenticity, you know? Um, and as soon as I open my mouth, I realise that it's an authentic product, you know, when you reach people. And one of the boys in Berlin said to me, mate, it's just like your pal telling you a story. And that, you know, that's my favourite compliment in the book. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage, Alison Miller. person for Orkney the, the night. Is that right? Anybody else for Orkney in here? No? Well, I, because, I, because I'm the only one, I'm going to do a shameless plug of two Orkney books. Toonie Void by Kevin Cormack, a book of brilliant Orcadian poetry. And dearest to my, my own heart, there's Gouster's Glimps and Viriorums for a group of Orkney women I've been working with for the last couple of years. And it's coming out uh, next month. 
So, <laughs> so Arcadian is alive and well and getting more alive and more al weller all the time. Um, I'm going to read a pretty bit for a story I wrote that was um, commissioned by Between Islands for Anne Lanter and Stornoway. But this story is set in Orkney, obviously. Um, it's fiction, but it draws very heavily on a diary kept by my mother in 1944. And the extract takes place on a dairy farm just outside Kirkwell in Orkney, where the main character is Eva, 15, still at school. She lives with her family, her mother and her father, and her two younger brothers, Charlo and Willie, as well as a servant lass, Mary Ann, who works in the dairy. There's been a platoon of soldiers camped on one of the fields of the firm since the start of the war. Eva sets out for the toon and goes to get her bike. Before I, before I started, though, I should say apologies to any Cockney speakers in the audience. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more Cockney than Cockney. <laughs> So Eva goes to get her bike. As usual, it wasn't there at the end of the house when Eva got out. And was there any point at all gone back in to ask what at this time? Ma would say something stupid like, Och, wished, you're too well want. You hae legs, do you know, and feet. There's plenty that disna, especially with the war on. A whack will do you good. And had wouldn't have made a one bit of effort to say, It's no fair, it's me bike. For Ma would always side with the boys. You're lucky to hear a bike, she would say. No, Ma, I'm no, for it's never there when I'm needing it. Nothing else for it but to walk. At least the snow was nearly away and it was a piece drier. I should say at this point, by the way, they're swearing in this piece as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for it but to walk. At least the snow was nearly away and it was a piece drier. Charlo ran out of the house and dived around between the dairy and the buyer. Eva gave after him. Charlo, are you seeing me bike? He was leaning with his face against the wall of the buyer and his arm up over his eyes, like he was counting for hide and seek. But then a great sob broke for him. Charlo, what's the matter? Nothing. Come on, tell me. He buried his face further into his arm. Come on, Charlo, it can't be that bad. He turned round in the end and his face was all elted with tears and bogies, a string of head dripping down to where his scarf was crossed over his haven chest. Giddy gad, come here. She wiped away what she could with her hanky. No, what's the matter? Feather give me a clip on the lug. What for? For, for saying a bad word. Eva couldn't help having a smile to herself. And what in the word was that? B L O O D Y. But it wasn't me fault. I was just saying the poem that Harry told me. What poem? And was Harry? He had stopped greeting me this time and he was speaking fast because he could see he had a chance to tell somebody the gross injustice that had been visited on him. He's the soldier that gives you your dinner when you tuck your plate down to the camp. A right pair of scroungers, Charlo and Willie, doing with their tin plates most days, lining up with the squaddies for grub. And what poem did Harry tell you? A sly look came over Charlo's face, and he started to recite in a voice a couple of notches above a whisper. This bloody tan's a bloody cass, now bloody trines, now bloody bass, and no one cares for bloody ass in bloody Orkney. <laughs> After one verse, Eva kent exactly what Harry was, for Charlo had his cockney way of speaking off part. Oh, bloody clouds and bloody rains, now bloody curbs, now bloody drains, the council's got no bloody brains in bloody Orkney. Two or three verses in, and he was in full swing, getting luder. Eva bulled him into the dairy. Mary Ann looked round for scrubbing out the pails and caught on right away. She clattered the brush down in the tin basin and they both joined in. The bloody flecks are bloody old, the bloody seats are bloody cold. You can't get in for bloody gold in bloody Orkney. <laughs> when they come to the next verse, Mary Ann jumped up on the milking stool, her stockings round her ankles, and her and Eva yelled at head at the top of their voices. No bloody sport, no bloody games, no bloody fun, the bloody dames won't even give their bloody names in bloody Orkney. <laughs> 
It was only then Eva noticed that Charlo had stopped speaking and was looking from one to the other of the two lasses with his mouth hanging open. I'm telling, then further I'll give the pair of you a pipe from the lug as well. But the lasses was helpless gelderin' by this time. And Mary Ann was walking round the dairy with one hand on her hip and the other in the air, waggling her beam in from side to side. The bloody dames, the bloody dames, the bloody, bloody, bloody dames, she sang out. Thank you. So the Scots champion winner at the Scots Language Awards 2021 is John Hoggart. The Scots champion award is for outstanding service to the cause of Scots and fechting for the risk of others to speak, write and learn in the Scots lead. He can't join us, but here's a video from Matthew Fett to tell us a wee bit of more. Hard on day! John Hoggart is this year's Scots champion and we couldn't hear better in. John's I've been a force for good for the Scots language as a teacher, as an activist and as a macker. Who money wanes and teachers read John's seminal Scots play Betty Dunlop, The Witch of Dal Rye and saw Scots for the first time in a serious work of literature at a time when there was nothing like it in Scottish scales. And as a dominee in his native Ayrshire, John doing a whatever of years championed education in Scots for his Scots speaking wanes. For it was obvious and natural to him that a Scots speaking teacher in a community of Scots speaking pupils would teach the bairns about their own language and literature. John's been a pioneer of Scots as a teacher and as an activist too. An act of bravery for Scots stands out. A front cover splash in the Glasgow Herald published on Burns Day 10 years ago con on the Scottish Government for mere provision for Scots and Scottish literature and scales. John was in a the wee group of folk prepared to stick their head over the parapet. This pressure led ultimately to the creation of Scottish Studies and the Scots Language Award. No bad, eh, John? A rich, articulate speaker at Ayrshire Scots, a Burns expert, a stalwart of the Association of Scottish Literary Studies, a gentleman, a fechter for a better linguistic settlement for Scotland's young Scots speakers, John Hodger bears the degree and is the 2021 Scots champion. I am honoured to introduce him to receive his well-deserved award. Go on yourself, John. I'm sorry I haven't actually made it to the award ceremony. A couple of months back I did something of a stupid fella for ladder. And though I'm on the mend, I'm no quite right yet. Although there's a few folk out there would probably tell you he's never been quite right. Oh, anyway. And certainly when I started teaching English in Ayrshire half a century ago, plenty of my colleagues thought I was a rich, daft laddie for encouraging the Scots language in the classroom. And even about 30 years ago, when I taught a class about learning Scots at Glasgow Uni, plenty of folk thought it was no wise. Now, Things have come a long way since then, and there's a lot of good work been done. But even now, plenty of Scots speaking wains aren't they encouraged to use it in the classroom or to learn in it along with English. And there's no many teachers qualified to teach about it, never mind some other Scottish topics. And I could go on about that all night. In accepting this award, I'd like to pay a wee tribute to my colleagues in the Association for Scottish Literature, who have done a power of work over the past half century in promoting the teaching of Scottish literature and Scotland's languages. And for most of that time, the chair of our education committee has been my trusty fear Ronnie Renton, a man that deserves a special award, or to himself. Now, I have to thank the ESLS for just recently producing uh, an e-book version of my play, Bessie in Lop, The Witch with O'Reilly, and planning to produce a revised print edition next year. And on the same topic, I have to thank a group of amazing Dorai women, chaired by a former pupil, who have done a lot in the community of Dorai to make sure that what happened to Bessie and Lop 
hasn't been forgotten. A couple of years ago, they asked me to write a few verses for them. The few verses became our 70 verses. And the women then persuaded more than 70 Dorai folk to recite the poem on camera, on location. And we've now got a film of the poem. A great creative community project in celebration of the language of the place. And I think this experience then set me off on a rhyming ramble round the rest of Ayrshire, writing poems about every town and village in the Shire. But of course this Ayrshire's at the centre of Scotland's story, it isn't just about Ayrshire. And I have to thank my good friends Matthew Fitt and Rob Wilson for their advice and encouragement in completing my journey and giving me advice about trying to get it published which is probably the really hard bit. So finally, thanks to Hans Up for Trad for this award. I'm really chuffed about it. Congratulations to all the other folk that have won awards, especially my fellow Ayrshireman and ASLS colleague Derek McClure. So enjoy your night, but whatever you're doing, stay off ladder. Right, that's us geared out seven awards already, with six more to go. Let's get ourselves another performance here on stage and then we'll all take a wee break. Make sure you're back in your seats after the interval for 8.45, that sound good? Uh, uh, exactly, that, indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, so well done to all the winners and all the nominees so far. For the folk at home, yous get treated to mere Alistair Heather content in the interval. Uh, you'll see my recent interview with Billy Kay will be screened during the interval. And we're getting loads of lovely feedback for folk watching. Uh, Carol says, I could listen to beautiful Orcadian all day. I think we'd agree with that. Ishbel is saying, what bra music. And there's loads of folk just saying congratulations to all the winners and congratulating the nominees as well. So, we'll talk where we break now. Just, in just a second, we'll hear one mere performance. Please welcome to the stage of the sensational Victoria McNulty. I'm so glad to be here and actually glad to be nominated for the Writer of the Year tonight because actually until I was nominated I didn't realise I wrote in Scots, so you can unpack that later. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'll probably get a wee bit political later, but now I'm just going to do a few poems about the pub. I hope you don't mind. So I'm in lunches. I lunches. You know lunches? I I know lunches. So anyway, he's stoning at the bar. And he's bogging happy trousers like he's been on some gap year. And then shat himself on the flight home. And he's like, I'm sorry, do you have the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> and lunches. I lunches, you know lunches? I a fucking no lunches. So he says to me, mate, now he leans into me, this binge drinking dentist. Eyebrows poised to extract molars for disbelieving mouse, and a pound rattles some Aztec camera for the jukebox overhead. But it's just me and him, rough and rotten, in a stout and formica stench. And he says to me, I says, mate, <clears throat> you must be fucking lost. Thank you. <laughs> So I've never really been to anything like this before, uh, maybe once I was asked to do a reply for the lassies at an SNP Burns night, but I'm like, oh no, I'm no party political, I hate this archetypal Scottish hard man, any of the fair few of you that might have followed my poetry in here already realise that, but I was like, they're like, we'll pay you, and I was like, well, do you know what, that's grand, I'll do anything, I'll, I'll dance for money. <laughs> So this is my reply for the lassies and apologies in advance for any Burns lovers in the room. I imagine there might be quite a few tonight. <laughs> Behold the Scottish man in his natural habitat. 
twenty yards by some wad brooks where all the punters wear bonnet hats. And as the lassies do enter, of whiplash, male necks do suffer. Because <laughs> it's bad form to forsake your mates for some daft bird, not other. And my eyeliner is set to stun and lipstick smeared to kill. And the pub erupts, the crowd explodes with a tin whistle and fiddle. And the smell a knock-off links, man, it permeates that putrid sweat. He says, yeah, sure, fucking dance all the boys in the back of the net. <laughs> he tells me that the referee's a wanker. <laughs> Arms anchored. He reels me in. Back to rack stomach, now softened with stout, sly cheeks and spiritous eyes, shy of meeting that working man's eyes by the puggies. The scarf is green and white, tied tight, it swaps his neck for mine. He tells me he's never seen anybody prettier in hoops. But I know he's just wanting some toast in bed in the morning. <laughs> that Scottish awkwardness conjured with Presbyterianism and Jeanster. Circa 1998. Is this some modern day Rabbi Burns? I imagine a wee bit of slap and tickle, love like a red, red rose pressed against pulled shutters, his strong jaw and black hair a swooning his way to the bedroom. Oh, Ayrshire charm, does exist by the way. And syphilis. <laughs> you jovial boys who love the joys, those blissful joys of lovers. Yet dare avow thy dauntless brow when thy bony lass discovers, and pray draw near and lend an ear, and welcome in a praetor. For lately I've been quarantined, disproven fornicator. <laughs> Imagine the panics in thy breasty, the other woman, the illegitimate children fathered by him. I imagine what the CSA would have made you a rabbi had they worked cash in hand fitting carpets. <laughs> and I can tell that you think I'm joking and I'm no. Because my friend had a secret. She said it was okay to share it. She said his hand tasted of tobacco as it tightly muffled her mouth. And my mother, Christ, she was strong. Stood in the doorway holding the dog, and we stood on the stairwell as he battered the door down to kill her. And my sister, Christ, she's smart, she's full of Scots poetry and classical art. And the more that she smouldered, the more that he tried to snuff her. You see, we are Agnes McElhoes and Jenny Claw. We are every 10 minutes, we are 53,821, we are 1 in 3, we are 10,282, we are 1 in 5. Well, the women you meet and the strangers in crowded streets and we are your mothers and your sisters and your friends too. And we are colleagues and we are comrades and sadly will be some of you. So when the time comes, I'd rather raise my glass and pledge that from now on, in this modern Scotland, we're going to do a wee bit more than just toast to the lassies. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to another Blether with Heather. I'm, of course, the eponymous Ali Heather, and I'm delighted to say I'm joined on this occasion by Mr. Billy Kay. Good evening, Billy. Good evening to you, sir. How are you getting on? I'm surviving like everybody else post-COVID, but get to be getting out again, mm -hmm. get to be doing things again. And, uh, for example, I was doing an amazing thing last weekend that shows the, the change in attitude towards scores for the tuna Cooper and Fife uh -huh. was celebrating the Scots heritage. Sir David Lindsay's satire of the three states was first performed in Cooper 
and I did a reading at the Crosa Cooper, so that's probably for the first time has been declaimed since the 15, I think it was the 1540s. Uh -huh. uh, I did a reading. The Lord Lion King of Arms was there, and he spoke. And the great thing about him was he introduced some Scots as well. Uh, and the bairns were all dressed up in medieval costume. And I got an email about it the day saying that the teachers were that uh, delighted with what happened that they're now going to encourage mere Scots and mere study of the ancient history of older Scots in, oh, in the come skills on, of Cooper. Come so on. That's phenomenal. Never get the same effect, eh? No, no, no. Just keep chabbing a wall and you'll get there. <laughs> 100%. So, of course, me and Billy are here tonight to chat ch ah, and Scots language in general, but specifically the Scots Language Awards, which are this Saturday. So they're at the Gardine Theatre, which is just kind of between Brody Ferry and Dundee, smashing a wee spot. We're all going to be getting lined there together. It'll be COVID safe. Folk will be wearing masks. There's place to social distance, that kind of good stuff. Get your tickets. Go to scotslanguageawards.com, the new... Get yourself a ticket and join us there. Of course, if I'm watching this in places that aren't so handy for Dundee, you can tune in online. It'll also be a hybrid event. So you can join us in person, or you can join us on the YouTube or whatever you're watching this, the new. Billy, how are you feeling about the Scots Language Awards? Uh, well, it's been on the go for three years now, mm -hmm. and uh, it's great to see the rise ilk a year and see the list uh, of potential winners growing every year. Tay, uh, I've described, in the mother tongue, I describe uh, Scots Wales as being like a, an underground activity practised by consenting adults in the privacy of their own home. <laughs> the new has definitely come out. Oh. And uh, it's things <laughs> like the Trad Awards that have broke. which was screamed by Lindsay eh, in the 16th century and a boy went round about the Tuna Cooper doing this declaration and telling folk when the play would start what it would be about it, there was sad bits in ye bit but there'd be a lot of good laughs there, a lot of good crack <laughs> and this was screamed by him back then and there I was able to read it centuries later so yeah. It's no deed yet, 100%. A lot of that's doing to your own work, which we'll chat about in just a minute. I would say, Abdi at home, if you are watching this, you can fire in whatever you're watching this, if that's Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. You can put any questions you have for Billy in there. You can ask anything about all the radio programmes, telly programmes, the books, any appearances he's done, anything you want to pitch to Billy K, new is your chance, and I'll get them up on the screen. Even just say hello and let us ken what you're watching today. All good fun. So, Billy, one of the things we talked about before we came on air was just uh, the first Scots Language Award three year sign. We sort of can't mace to the folk on the leads. Like, mace to the nominees, we'd read their work, we'd engage with them, the teachers, we can't fade different kind of meetings and that sort of thing. This year, especially the teachers and that, there's mere and mere names and faces we didn't can at all. And it hurts we didn't can there even day in Scotland. It's exciting, eh? It's this sense of the, the language coming out and uh, expanding out the ghetto, if you like. Uh, aye, Lang Syne, there was a, a bean factors in the vineyard, <laughs> if you like. Uh, but now there's, there's a lot mayor, mm -hmm. and that's only a good sign, because the mayor, the merrier, and a lot of folk that are learners of Scots coming on to, which is important. For only language, with that great saying, that can for its sin, use it or lose it. Well, especially a language like, like Scots, you have to use it. You have to make it public. You have to bring it out of the ghetto and out of the closet and mark it a public, a public affair. And that's what organisations like Hands Up for Trad and events like the these awards do. 100%. Couldn't agree more. But we would say something we're also dead looking forward to, because obviously me and Billy will be there. Billy's got an award to present. I've got to host the whole thing. We're awfully excited about the live performances we're going to hear on the night. So I personally am most excited about Elastic Cried Victoria McNulty. Uh -huh. Now, she brought out a collection of poetry cried Exiles. She's fate a scheme in Glasgow. I didn't mind the name yet. It's something like what the East End, whatever, whatever pet they all support Celtic in. She's fate that bit. Could be Dennis. Could be. I, don't know. I can't even mind the start. Could be Easter Hoose. But she brought out this amazing collection of poems uh, cried Exiles. Right. And then over lockdown, put together a wee film um, about it, which right. was just the most powerful and impactful piece of new screaming I've seen about Glasgow in years. 
she didn't ken until it hit the press that she was doing Scott's work. Aye, aye. And no, she's a, a, a tremendously talented poet, aye. but she was just thinking, I'm using my own voice, I'm speaking aye. the language of my own community. She is one of the best performance poets going, and I don't think you've seen her live before, have you? No, I haven't. Absolutely, something to look forward to. Great. But you you were telling me you are excited most about Ellie Beaton. Well, Ellie is one of these Doric divas. <laughs> 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 I ken her through Iona Fife. Uh, I've met her at uh, some of the Trad Awards in the past, where she's come along to the awards uh, We Iona. And then I saw her in the BBC's Young Traditional Musician a concert this year for the first time on TV and she's got a cracking voice and she's a cracking Scots speaker, Doric speaker and she's steeped in the traditions of the North East so she's singing mm -hmm. on Saturday and I think that's a thing to stress, there'll be great crack in these awards, it's not just folk stunning up and being, uh, being Ken Speckle and being worthy and being given an award, they'll be good crack and Ellie's it's great for, for Northeast sand crack. Aye, hundred percent. There's folks that I'm very excited to meet, like a little chicken, a boy that's kind of dead big on TikTok, just like humorous, good sangster, all that kind of good right. stuff. He's coming along, he's up for Scott Speaker of the Year. Right. Um, but I no, the folk there, and we're already talking about what we're going to go after. So uh, <laughs> there's a party to be had. But I thought away for the awards, and mind awards. Garden Theatre this Saturday night. Get your ticket at scotslanguageaward.com. They're only um, a tenner, I think it is. Isn't ah, it? about a tenner. They're, they're good price. So you're about nine for a concession, about ah. 11 for again, your, your full fee paying folk. Yeah. So ah, it's, it's dead accessible. But I thought away from that, because a lot of folk will can you for the work you do, the writings and programmes you put out there. I thought I'd just ask you a wee bit about yourself. Tell us about where you come from, because you're no a native, you buy in Dundee now, but uh, you're no a native to here. Why did you come from, and how come you got so invested in? I suppose Scots language, Scots culture, the whole, the stories of the working classes. Aye. Uh, well, I was brought up in Gawston in Ayrshire, and uh, my world was entirely a Scottish village, and this was the pre-television generation. We didn't get the, the TV until I was maybe a 12, or even 12, 13, that kind of age. So it was a Scottish village rather than a global village, and that village spoke 90% Scots, 90% at the time. Uh, so it was rare to, to attempt to communicate. However, when you went to the skill, you got a gunk because you had to communicate in English. And suddenly you saw some folks switching off the education for a guy at early age. And you saw other folk go on the challenge, learn to speak English and get by in that register. Uh, later on, I discovered uh, because I was good at languages and it's because I was a Scots speaker and broke up in a bilingual situation, strong bilingual situation, that I was aware of languages and I was good at uh, French and German, and that was my passport to university. Uh, but I came from a strong, strong working class uh, family that identified strongly with the Scots lead tradition. A great, some great burn singers in the Kais in Gawston. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister was a good burn singer. My father played in the brass bone and played tunes like a man's a man for all that in New Year's morning. Uh, and at family get-togethers, when folk were asked to do a turn, some folk would do a Burns song, it was all even tradition, other folk would do a, a Four Tops song or a Beatles song. So Scottish and Scots language culture was paired to popular culture. So when I went, to, when I started getting the negativity about Scots, I thought, I, I don't accept that. Uh, the idea that they, if you spoke Scots, you were inarticulate, that was a famous thing when I did work with the BBC for the first time. In one of my first uh, reviews, it said, Billy is good at making inarticulate people talk. <laughs> and I'd only met hugely articulate folk in Scots in the Odyssey programmes, the working class history programmes I made. Uh -huh. But the boy who wrote this, Dune Thokta, was garin, <laughs> a, a non-verbal folk suddenly fluent. When it was the opposite, uh, it was the fact that there were fluent Scots speakers and I broke out of them. So I get, I get gowed for that. I mean, some amazing incidents where Scots language context. I mind uh, Evelyn Crockett, a heron gutter in lossy mouth, mm. who come away with a, a, a sentence that could uh, come for the days of the marker. It was, we used to hain a puckle stains to flag awa the gouse. We used to hain to keep aside, not to he. We used to hain a puckle stains, a few stones, to flag awa, to frighten away the gows, the seagulls. Now that could have been 
That could have been for 16 century schools. Uh, other ones was once interviewing an old boy who was born in Seville uh, in a wee mining community in South Ayrshire. A group of Spaniards come over to Ayrshire to work in the Luger Iron Works. And I was blaring a what him in Ayrshire Scots. Then he did that thing where I switched on the tape recorder and he felt he had to translate itself. He had to hour set himself into mm. standard English. Mm. That was what would be expected. And what I mean into the interview, and I'm thinking, I've lost this boy be a stoop and start again, or what day a day. Fortunately, his wife, who was also born in Seville, but spoke Ayrshire Scots, said, Hoy you. Stop putting it on. Talk scotch like the rest of us. Which was fantastic. <laughs> oh, what an insect of married <laughs> and, life. And it. when he when he heard that, it jolted him back into who he was. Mm -hmm. And I got this brilliant interview. And the strength of these Odyssey working class programmes were the fact that they were in Scots. I'm awfully interested in this transition you talk about where you, when you did start doing all these programmes, you got all this great Scots gear out of Hauk and you put it out there in the world. Um, and it was obviously popular, but you got loads of kind of pushback about yeas and Scots. These days, you get invited down to Cooper's, there's Scots language awards and all that. And I didn't see you getting as much negativity as maybe in the old days. But we still see it online, ah. especially around lassies like Iona Fife, yes. like uh, Len Penny, we mentioned already. Incredible toxicity around Scots. Is that still about Scots or is that about something else? And there's yeas and Scots to beat them, do you think? It's a, it's a, it's a complicated issue. Maybe because I'm a lot older than they are, and uh, I've been around for years, and <laughs> even the haters have got used to me <laughs> <laughs> and can't come up with one of the negative to, to, to beat me away. Uh, it could be something like that, but the misogyny against these lassies at times is, is just outrageous. And it might be that it's just men. See, in the past, there used to be a tradition whereby men, and they still be, spoke more Scots than women. Women were the ones that looked, traditionally, and famous looked after the Wains, wanted them to go on. So sometimes it was the women that forbade the Wains to speak Scots, whereas the men and the boys spoke Scots as part of their masculine identity. So for these lassies to be successful speaking Scots, eh, it might be something to be with a challenge to their masculinity or something like that. But it's, all used to go, yeah. it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous in this day and age. But the great thing is, they're brilliant at fighting mm. against it. Mm. I mean, Lenny's put dunes to the bam pots are phenomenal. Oof, ah, that's incredible. Ah, plodder on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, Ken, what they, all the detractors are doing in the comment section someplace. <laughs> Uh, Len Penny's presenting the awards, and I think I don't know if I've nominated in just about every category. So right. you can was uh, day yeah. the better out all that. Yeah. Eh? No, it's great to see. It's great to see. Uh, so any of the things you did that I'm awfully interested in, obviously the awards this year are in Dundee, which is smashing. It's a it's dead handy for us, first day off. Yeah. But um, you come out of Dundee. I didn't think you were Biden here yet when you first did interviews around Dundee with Dundee Scott speakers. Aye, it was a... Uh... The desire for the Odyssey series was to cover all the working class experience in Scotland. And I can't know to be done be whatsoever. But I was friendly with a great traditional singer called uh, Jim Reed, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. translated, ah, who uh, adapted some of Violet Jacob's poems for Angus, for example, to create great Scots songs. And uh, I can't Jim for the folk scene because I was, I was into traditional music. And I asked Jim, if, if, if he thought there should be a programme about the Angus Bothies, the Bothy Childs, or about the Arbroath Fisher folk, to do something for this area. And he says, I think you should do something in the jute. And my first reaction was jute. Dark brune, boring, industrial, unattractive. And he tell me a wee bit about the women. And he says, and I ken some great characters that would do it. So he convinced me to do it. And within literally my first, it was a Friday night, my wife was my driver at the time. His one drove me up to Dundee and we stayed with Jim eh, and he took me to visit eh, Sarah Craig and eh, Mrs. Coburn. And within literally half an hour, I kind of had gout. These women were amazing. Because of that reversal of social roles that I was unaware of, or the pair men and boys were paid off at the age of 18, and the women were cried kettle bailers quite often. 
and the women became the wage earners and strong, strong women developed, created a matriarchal society. And I just found it fascinating. So I recorded these women and the strength of these women was phenomenal. A, a great line that Mrs. Coburn, I can still picture her to this day, Mrs. Coburn in Dura Street, come a wee wee, talking about Winston Churchill. A, I didn't vote for him. I didn't vote for Nebdy, for looking after Bairns, looking after, for washing trees, looking after Bairns, and looking after a bloody boozy man. That's <laughs> she, she says, I didn't have time to vote. <laughs> oh. but, he, but he also, she also referred to Churchill as a humphy back at Twister. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with that, like. So when, when folk are praising Winston Churchill, uh, I had the Dundee version of that, and I also had the, the Ayrshire Miners version of that, growing up in a mining community in Ayrshire, mm -hmm. where he had this terrible reputation as the man who uh, engaged the army in George Square in 1919, I think it was. Ah, oh, so they had minded that, eh? Oh, well, that was still, among the miners was still a story, and also for sending in the Scottish regiments to their death of the Dardanelles during the First World War. So he was a hated figure, Churchill, Churchill. I know he's, uh, one of the things I really love about Dundee is that just commonly we've all sort of agreed just to no like him. So <laughs> okay. it's like a marquee pride of the city. And I, I can right. get on board with it. And the mayor, the mayor you read about it, it is satisfying. But then when you do see him win like greatest Britain ever, you think, Aye. hold on. Aye. No. We, haven't, we haven't engaged the rest of the, the UK and we're narratives Aye. here enough. That's right. Um, so in terms of the Scots language and the sense you're getting around it just now, Faye, Faye when you first started it, there wasn't that many kind of names that were um, that were kind of day in Scots dead publicly. Yeah. Eight of them is winning an award for the Scots Language Awards and you're presenting it. It's a man who cried Derek McClure. Mm -hmm. Tell us just a wee bit about Derek. So if you use at him, then he can, Derek McClure um, is being up for a, a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Scots Language Awards, which Billy will present. That's right, and it's and the award is given by a, a fantastic screever called Janet Paisley. Mm. That I did a lot of work too. Derek, <clears throat> I would say, more than anybody in academia in my lifetime, has been the end that say furthered Scots and the cause of Scots. And one of the things I, I'm going to say when I present the award is that I, I was able to study Scots as part of my English language and literature degree in 1970. 69 to 74. But the problem was, as a young radical who was a Scots speaker, I felt that at times the academics were treating it as a deed language. Ah. And I didn't like that at all, because I'm sitting with the, the tongue in my head, literally. Derek has never treated it as a deed language. It's always been promoting it as a leaving language, a leaving lead, and something that's still got a hell of a lot of life in it. So that's one of the things I admire most because a lot of academics traditionally like to stone back for a subject and say they've got the objectivity. Well, Derek's always been pro scores and that shows in the work he's done. But he's done great objective academic work as well. So uh, I can speckle and deserve and figure. Aye, 100%. Couldn't agree more with any of that. I worked with Derek a wee bit in my time working for the University of Aberdeen. And one of the things, like you say, he was so passionate, just dead passionate about Scots and about Scots, language, culture, history, all that good stuff. But he never tinted his objectivity. Aye. He aye kent what he was talking about, aye. but he aye kent um, what was what could be relied upon, what was evidence, yes. and why maybe folk like myself were getting a wee bit carried down the Ryan Gateway things, mm. just getting a wee bit carried away, we wee, wee bit carried away with the activism Aye. that maybe wasn't on the surest footing. Aye. He, I can't, the way to go. And just to give you a wee recommendation, uh, one of the things I love that Derek's produced, outside of, I'd say, outside of his academic work, is this. It's cried a kiss of skinklin things. And it's a collection of work for the uh, first and second waves in the Scots language renaissance for the 20th century. Now, you hear some of the big hitters in there. You hear like Nan Shepherd, Hugh McDermott, the sort of folk you'd expect to be in there. But there's also dozens of lesser Kent poets working in that rich 20th century vernacular tradition in the, in the mould of McDermott's Kent, sort of plastic Scots. Aye, aye. And it's 
It's a smashing bit of work and it's a smashing pet of our story that mm -hmm. got us to where we are today. But right. maybe I wasn't too aware of, and Derek's brought that together, is brought together no with that deed hand academic coldness, like you're saying, mm -hmm. with a real warmth and with real love. And we, his introduction, you can see that sort of clear sectedness, but also his love and depth of knowledge is subject. Um, so in terms of the, the change that's been rocked by folk like yourself, folk like Derek, you've put a lot into, the, into your activism for Scots. Do you think you've achieved a significant change? Am I growing up in a different world? Are you're like, say, littlest chicken, can 20 year olds who do in Glasgow? Are they growing up in different environments or in language? Thanks to the work of Derek and yourselves, like what's changed? Uh, it depends where you come from, what your experience has been at the skill, what age you are. In other words, I've had a lot of folk coming up to me over the years and seeing what a difference my work, and especially reading the Scots of Mother Tongue, made to their self-worth mm -hmm. and their identity and what they thought to themselves and the folk they came from. And the book has sold thousands and thousands of copies, but there are still folk who've no experience of that, who don't can exist, who, I mean, I remember Matthew, Matthew Fitt, talking about getting into a skill in Glasgow, where to introduce Burns, the teacher wrote up the word slang. That's what Burns wrote in. So there's tremendous enthusiasm and the uh, ver and smedum and ye side of the Scots language movement. There's there's negativity, ignorance, and Dunrecht hatred mm -hmm. among some folk in the working class eh, that are negative about Scots. And in a way, I think, hate themselves because if they're really negative, it's a lot of the negativity comes from folk that eh, have been brought up not to feel good about themselves and the culture they come from. Mm -hmm. And eh, therefore, so. So I, it's a different world. There's mere folk coming out new, there's mere things being done new, but there's still a hell of a lot of ignorance about that we still have to dispel. I'd agree with all that. I'd agree with all that. What do you think, what do you think the best way for it is? Because there's mere and many of us, any things you get with the Scots Language Awards, and they join us on Saturday, so you can be part of this network. Anything we're getting to the Scots Language Awards and kind of different hands up for trad events and things like the gathering, is it is bringing Mayor and Mayor Fick together for different dialect regions. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Doric speakers, there's Arcadians coming down. I think we're Shetlanders, aren't going to mark it down. <laughs> like the boats ran out of diesel or whatever. <laughs> uh, there's we there's Glaswegians, there's Ayrshire folk. You're getting this hail mixed or max to different dialect right. groups, different experiences, folk for the media, folk for schools, primary, secondary. How do we how do we best use all that? Ken, smed them as you talk right. about. Well, one thing, for example, uh, one of the writers that's up, I think it's his, his book or he's uh, up for an award, uh, is uh, Graham Armstrong, who wrote a, a brilliant novel called The Young Team about gang life in North Lanarkshire. Mm -hmm. And it's written in the vernacular of that part of the country. Now, some of the, some of the young folk who are part to that culture, I'm not sure if they would call what they, what they speak Scots. But it's paired to that Scots radical tradition. And a lot of them have been influenced by Irvin Welsh. Mm. Uh, and if if you'd been told uh, back in when train spotting came out that uh, a book written in the Edinburgh Street vernacular would become an international bestseller and produce an iconic movie, folk would have thought you were off your head. But now there's young writers like Graham Burnett's another example. Oh, it's a working class state of mind. Colin Burnett. Uh, Colin Burnett, sorry. He's, his uh, short stories are excellent and uh, few are few are great characters, working class characters, look at set in Leith. And uh, so there's two young writers with different backgrounds and they're, they're using their form of Scots. Now, once folk get used to reading that form of Scots, it's easy to stretch them and to introduce all their forms and uh, words for different dialects and for different periods. So all that activity is paired to something that's off I get. So Graham and Colin kind of gave me drugs. Aye. <laughs> well, I wouldn't use drugs in either context. <laughs> uh, so aye, uh, one final mind, and I, I would say, are we calling it for uh, Joe Bruce? Oh, dearie me, the subtype generator can't cope with the Scots language. 
I think YouTube's trying to hammer uh, subtitles oh, right. underneath us. Off his sorry YouTube. Well, they hate to get, hate to get clever with it, eh? Scott speaking robots. Why no? Um, and Wallace is just saying, I've just read that fantastic. And we've mentioned the Ween books. Were you talking about... Uh, tell us what, what book you've just read that was fantastic, because I'd love to Ken. And uh, Laura Smith saying she'd love to... Um, She'd love to overset some Royal Society of Chemistry resources into Scots if you're keen. <laughs> well, chemistry is no really a strong suit of mine, Billy. How do you feel about chemistry? Uh, I'm afraid it's a foreign language to me, unlike most languages. <laughs> chemistry and mathematics are a foreign language to me. But some of the great scientists in the world would have spoken Scots in the in the time of the Scottish Enlightenment. So they would have been uh, great Scots speakers, Hutton and people like that, definitely. 100%. There's your line. That's us just about out of time for the day. So mind and get on. All the uh, the voting is now closed. The nominees are out there to be uh, read, but the winners have been picked by you, the general public. Join myself and Benny, Billy and Iona Fife, Ellie Beaton, Victoria McNulty, and a whina others doing at the Gardine Theatre, 7 p.m. Saturday night. And we all out for a wee bevy afterwards. So join us for that and all. Uh, get your tickets and get all your information at scotslanguageawards.com. Billy, cheers very much for coming along tonight. Delighted. Thank you. Hello, hello, welcome back, welcome back. We have six main awards to you and a good scalp of poems, performances and music to get your feet really tapping here or at home. Let's bar straight into some mayor music, so please welcome Cameron Nixon and Rachel Campbell back to the stage. Thank you very much. You keeping it on? I can't see your mouth. I'm gone with a lass we pit and we. She's every fisher laddie's dream She got her hand in by the key And saves her kisses just for me Pit and we, pit and we. She's every fisher laddie's dream She got her hand in by the key And saves her kisses just for me Last July it came to pass I met this bonny fisher lass We had in say blue and blacker hair I met her doing a dance their fair Pit and weem, pit and weem She's every fisher laddie's dream She got a head and in by the key And saves her kisses just for me 
I asked her if I take her home. She says, "Ach, fine, I can your game, but nevertheless, you're off a kind. In fact, I would not really mind." Petten weem, petten weem. She's every fisher laddie's dream. She got a hand in by the key and saves her kisses just for me. I took her home that Saturday night. The moon was shining, no say breast. And as we lay there on the grass, I says, Hey Joe, would you be my lass? Pitten weem, pitten weem. She's every fisher laddie's dream. She got a hand in by the key. And saves her kisses just for me. She's my lass new, and we lack in. She does na gan we other men, for I was quick while they were slow, and that's how I won my pitten weem Joe. Pitten weem, pitten weem. She's every fisher laddie's dream. She got a hand in by the key. Saves her kisses just for me. Pitten weem, pitten weem. She's every fisher laddie's dream. She got a hand in by the key. And saves her kisses just for me. Thank you very much. Hope we've all been able to grab a drink or two. That was Pitten Weem Joe. Someone has over there anyway. <laughs> that was a song written by John Watt in the 1960s. And you, the story of the young lad. And he managed to get himself the wee lassie from Pitten Weem. We're going to finish off our wee segment now with a song for you all to join in. One that you should all know. Well, hopefully you'll know. And it's called Tack a Dram. A wee parting song for you. Rachel and I have loved our time here. So thank you very much. Oh, this evening's passed so quickly And the music's almost done We've heard the piano and the fiddler the singer and his song The time has come for us to leave you One last song before we go Say button up and I be cheery Tag a drama for Say button up and I be cheery Take a drama for we go For this night we will remember And the music's been just fine But the cold grey land of Caithness can be cruel and unkind The time has come for us to leave you Travel through the ice and snow Say button up and I be cheery Take a drama for Say button up and I be cheery Take a drama for we go So good.
good night and God be with you. Watch over you until. We can all meet here together and our glasses will refill. We'll drink our health day absent friends, let them be and whiskey flow. Say button now and I be cheery. Tag a drama for ye go. Say button now and I be cheery. Tag a drama for ye go. Thank you very much. Rachel Campbell there, incredible, incredible. It's been that long since I heard live music. It's just smashing to hear it back. Our next award is Scots Business of the Year, sponsored by the Scots Language Society. This award celebrates them that put Scots in their business, on their business, in ads and in public. They are a vital pair attacking Scots back into the heart of our culture and no just in the house. Nominees for Scots Business of the Year are Lidl. <laughs> North East Ballad School, <laughs> Quirky Coo Dundee, Scots Porridge Oats, and the very dab Scottish Water. <laughs> to present the award, please welcome for the Scots Language Society, Dr. Fiona Jane Brown. It's good to hear the Northeast contingent here. So, a quick wordy about the Scots Language Society or Scots Lead Associate. We've actually been gone for 50 years. That's all that in me. Uh, we've actually got our colloque next uh, Saturday in Perth. So, if you're interested, you want to come at St Matthew's Kirk, uh, look up lalands.co.uk and you'll be able to book through that why. Now, the Scots Lead Associate has supported writing in Scots, or screaming, I should say. Nedges poetry in our forums fits over. So if you want to write anything in your lead, then do so and contact us and we will endeavour to publish it, whether online or in our magazine, Lalance, which is about to get its 100th edition as well. So, thank you. The Scots business of the year is Lido! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been kind of thrown under a bus here because nobody told me there was speeches, so if, um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is slightly put together since uh, the first award and I noticed the people were giving speeches, but on behalf of everyone at Lidl, firstly, I'd like to say a massive congratulations to all the winners and all the finalists that are here this evening. You've all done a great job in your, in your field. Um, the business of the year came about because we had a range of poems called Dafties. There was one by a certain certain Len Penny, I think, as well, who covered off Fife. Um, we had one from Aberdeenshire, who was done in Doric. Um, Eileen Lewis, uh, Dumfries and Galloway, Dundee as well. So we, we covered all bases because we like to cover all bases and cover all things Scottish. Um, a few years ago, we actually gave free coal to try and reintroduce uh, first footing. So you could go to Lidl, get a pint of milk, loaf of bread, wetsuit, uh, <laughs> with power drill, set of skis, and a bit of coal. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to bring that back uh, this year. So again, thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, and once again, thank you. <laughs> Great stuff, great stuff. Scots School of the Year, sponsored by Itchy Koo and Black and White Publishing, is our next award. Nadu in this room and watching at home, we've had all sorts of different experiences with Scots in our own schooling lives. Some of them keech, some of them a lot worse than that. Um, 
All these nominees are Mac and Cher that have bairns come to their classrooms with Scots tongues in their heads. They find their lead, respect it, valued, and they get to grow with it in their education. And if bairns come into in their schools that aren't speaking Scots, they engage with it positively. Like, what a revolution. What a revolution. So, let's give a good cheer to all the nominees, because they absolutely deserve it. The nominees are Dunfermline High School, <laughs> Pentland Primary, Edinburgh, Shaquir Primary School, Dumfries, Westray Junior Secondary School, Orkney. And please welcome to present the award, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Billy Kay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, lads and lassies, I'm stoning in for Matthew Fitt and James Robertson. What well, couldn't he be here the next? I'm Guy Blythe to be representing Black and White Publishing and Itchy Coo, sponsors of this year's Scots Skill of the Year. Itchy Coo is now in its 28th year of publishing broad books for bairns of all ages and is proud, indeed vaunty, to support skills in this way through the Scots Language Awards. This is a prestigious award, Gien Ilka Year, to celebrate the very best of Scots lead teaching and Scots provision for Wayne's and our skills. All the skills nominated here value their Scots speaking pupils. Their skills is places where Scots bairns can thrive, be themselves, and racks up to their full academic potential without only fear of ever getting checked or told off for speaking their mother tongue. All their skills are to be congratulated and thank it for their hard work and commitment to Scots. As you see, the nominated skills are Dunfermline High School, Pentland Primary Edinburgh, Traquir Primary Dumfries, and Westry Junior Secondary School in Orkney. And if I can find my wee envelope, I'll tell you the winner. The winner is to queer primary skill. <laughs> See you, the lights are really bright. Um, thank you so much uh, on behalf of all the staff, all the Waynes at Queer Primary, and I'd like to say a huge congratulations to all the other schools that have been nominated. It's an amazing thing that we've got uh, skills now uh, tacking forward and uh, keezing up uh, the Scots lead. Uh, it wasn't the case when my mum was at school, and it wasn't really the case when I was at school, so I'm fair pleased that there's uh, schools around the country uh, now doing it. Um, some of the things we've been doing at Queer is we've been learning about Scots animals and when there's no Scots word, we've been making up our own. And my Wayne said they wanted them in the dictionary and so this is part of my campaign to do that. So uh, some ones they've made up are Lanky Gobber for Llama, uh, <laughs> Ben Bodrins for Wild Cat and uh, Ain Haim for Tortoise. So if we could all start uh, <laughs> using those please, uh, the Wayne's fair appreciate it. Um, before we came up, uh, I asked uh, 12 of our P7s what they'd say when we won, so I'm going to uh, leave it to them. First of all, Autumn said, First of all, thank you to everyone who voted for us. This is an incredible achievement. Thank you to all the teachers who have taught us and brought Scots poetry into our lives. And Nina said, I'd like to start off with saying thank you to everyone for voting for us and all the teachers who have taught us all the Scots things we know. It's such a great achievement for Queer Primary School and we hope that we can inspire other schools to bring more Scots into their learning. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks very much. I think it's time for another wee performance. Please welcome back to the stage, Anna Stewart.
years ago, the Scottish Book Trust asked if I would write a personal story um, to help inspire other stories from members of the public um, on the theme of rebel. So I had never written a personal story about my own life before, um, but my mum very kindly allowed me to write this one about me and her. Um, so this story is called, oh, it does have swearing, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's called Thelma and Louise, bitch. <laughs> How me and mum came to be living it up on the Forfa Road is a pure massive saga. So I'm just going to tell you the best bit, the end. We were visiting Edinburgh for Dundee, staying at my great auntie's flat on the other side of the meadows. It was a summer night and we were walking back Faytoon through the line of trees called Jobbone Walk. And that's when my mum's husband put his hand up my skirt, right in front of her. Years before this man laid hands on me, but that time it was made in violence, no like this. This was something a wee bit different, even for him. That time he tried to persuade Abdi it hadn't happened because I was a teenager and he was a man, a heady or a scale, a responsible adult. And you ken what I'm like, volatile, a shouter, a screamer then, of those hormones and that attitude, bitch. Back then, I didn't tell mum outright because I couldn't speak the words to her, so he got to do the talking. He'd a hold over her, her money, her sense of where she'd been, and slowly, slowly, he cut her off fair in life. Fisticuffs are the words he used. Because as it happens, sometimes a 40-year-old man needs to lay fists on a girl of 17. A few years went by, Ed didn't see that much of mum, but enough time had passed for us to draw a line under it. Until this night on Jawbone Walk, when I was grown, 25 or 26. This night, I didn't shout and scream, I got a minter. And even though it was dark, she'd seen what he'd done, so there was shame again between us. Except, Twelve year he'd spent trying to rip us apart and he couldn't he do it. He didn't need to brack things, but didn't he ken how? There's an unpredictable quality to a desperate man. He tried so affy hard to be different. He wore bright coloured waistcoats, deliberately odd socks and a fedora hat. He was a member of Tony Blair's Labour and liked singing Cher. Do you believe in life after love? I can feel something inside me say I really don't think you're strong enough. But that's for his story, and I didn't care to tell it. Soon it would be the day we'd hire a van and pack up all mum's stuff when he wasn't in. He'd come back to an empty house and we'd wash the flares or a rented flat in a closey, only a few streets away. But we had a pretty efficient buzzer entry system and to our old Italian sisters that lived side by side underneath, keeping an eye on things. No long after, me and the lad I was living, we split up and I came to live on Forfa Road with a sere hair and weight issues for eating too many hot dinners. <laughs> That's when the fun began. Every night, Mum came home with wine. All I had to do was put dry pasta in a pan and she was popping the cork, filling the glasses. I'd never had a better flatmate. We went on holiday to Finland and swam in an area of 55,000 lakes. We took saunas and joined a gym, got back massages and had her hair done. I did a master's degree and Mum went on dates with guys that weren't psychotic. <laughs> We watched Thelma and Louise on TV and got in debt, then got out it again. We had pals hour and mum threw pillows and broke loads of glass. Em and the bus for the windy. Mum went all the way to Ayrshire to get a dog that turned out wild. We tell each other the stories for our lives. We joined groups, then unjoined them, together. We cleaned up shite spewing for the sunny flow toilet our landlord wouldn't fix. We learned to fall asleep in the dark. I graduated, then signed on the dole, and we started a book club that was just her and me. We sang songs and took photographs, and in time, I saw a squirrel eat a nut out mum's hand. Fay the windy, fireworks blasted, different coloured light, year after year, while we waited for her divorce to come through. And all that time he was dragging it out, we lived life and were defiant in our happiness, free to be a family again, free, free. A few years later, Mum was sat outside the maternity ward, reading a book and waiting for hours, just in case I needed her. And as it happened, I did. Through all the antenatal classes, nobody tells you that the border of birth and death is paper thin. Nobody tells you how it feels being there in a tween. 
or that your mind might try to reach that place again and again, because there's comfort and sometimes a gripping fear, kenning what it'll be like to hand yourself out at life's end to that newer room. Mum was in there wee me. She cut the cord when my boy gulped air that first time, and now they play the games eh mindo as a bairn, and I see my mum fae back then, afore the bruise of that man took hald. I see how our happiness has erased him, how we've rubbed the fucker out. <laughs> Our next award is a very special award. It's the Janet Paisley Lifetime Services to Scott Awards, and it's won by Derek McClure. So Derek. Stand down, Derek, stand down. So uh, Derek has been doing a hail poor of work in the Academia of Scott for his uh, position at the University of Aberdeen or decades now. He's I've been very clear about making sure Scots was studied with proper respect and proper scrutiny. He put out a book called Why Scots Matters a few decades ago that really helped change the way Scots was perceived within academia and really big at the foundations for all the smashing academian, academic work done in Scots the day. To present the award, we hey once mayor, the Ken Speckle Scots lead activist, screamer, broadcaster, inspiration to many at Heyman in the room, Mr. Billy Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, nobody deserves this award mayor nor Derek McClure. And in giving it to him, we have a perfect balance between the creative sky side of Scots, represented by Janet Paisley herself, and the scholarly embodied by Derek. Yet both of them were allowing passion for this their ain dear mother tongue. When my book, Scots the Mother Tongue, came out, one of the things Derek said about it was that it was partisan and name the war for that. And at the time, that got my hair loup because when I studied Scots at Edinburgh University in between 69 and 74, roughly, at that time, I felt that a queen of the academics <coughs> approached the subject as if it was a deed language and could turn their neb up at the fout the ettle to take scores out of the academic ghetto and put it back into the hearts, the souls, the moods, and the minds of the folk. As an Ayrshire Scots speaker, Derek Kent, it was a leaving lead that was I at the core of the identity of the mass of the population. And Biden and neighbor Dean Mace to his life, he was uncle of war as wheel or the great tradition of the muckle songs and the Doric poetry of the Northeast. At a conference, I saw him do any his money pierty pieces or reciting verses in the bravest of braid buchan, a guy impressive sect. See, he's a chill that unites us as will in appreciating the range of Scots spoken in Ilka Eart of the country. In all the programmes, I roched on Scots. Derek was I the first buddy I thought to get he, for his wise words on the subject. And he always works in sign, his muckle, undemous works in sign, has been ident to restore Scots to its richfa place at the centre of the cultural life of our nation. Therefore, loons and quines, it gives me muckle pleasure and pride to give the Janet Paisley Lifetime Services to Scots Award to Mr J. Derek McClure. Trust the fears. Oh, this is a real honour. I very much appreciate it. Thank you all very much. A lifetime's achievement. Looking back, I've been warned not to talk for very long, so I'll not sum up my whole lifetime. But <laughs> 50 years ago, half a century ago, when I started in the field, there was a lot being done. There were monumental works like the Scottish National Dictionary, the Dictionary of the Older Scottish Tongue, the Linguistic Atlas of Scotland being completed by never-to-be-forgotten giants in the field like Jack Aiken, David Murison, Hans Speidel, Jim Mather, 
And all the time, all the intervening decades, there's been the Association for Scottish Literary Studies, the Scots Language Society, the Forum for Research in the Languages of Scotland and Ulster, doing important work, organizing courses, organizing conferences, trying to bring Scots, bring to the attention of people all up and down the length and breadth of Scotland. But for nearly all the time, there has been the sense that we were talking to a brick wall. One of my boys, when he was wee, asked me, Dad, if something happens and you feel that it's happened before, is that what you call a sense of garde lou? <laughs> well, a sense of garde lou was what we kept on getting. Finally, we were having to answer the same questions. Is Scots a language or is Scots just a dialect? Is Scots not just slang? Why should we attend to Scots? Does anybody actually speak Scots? Does anybody want to hear about Scots? Does anybody want to write in Scots? And keeping on for year after year, decade after decade, answering all these, trying to answer these questions, and seemingly to no avail. But I don't know exactly what the catalyst has been, whether it's been the advent of social media, whether it's been the efforts by the government, now that we have an SNP government, whether what it has been, but whatever the catalyst was, it's obvious, it's very clear that of late, there's been an enormous increase, a great increase in the interest, popular interest in Scots and in the high profile that Scots now has in the educational field. The idea of an award for Scots School of the Year or Scots Teacher of the Year, not just 50 years ago, but even 10 years ago, this would have been unthinkable. And yet here tonight, we have, we've had the Scots School of the Year, the Scots Teacher of the Year being deservedly honored. And we have all this great um, enthusiastic audience, including containing, it's heartening to see a lot of young folk, the young generation, the rising generation, let's say, of Scots speakers, Scots readers, Scots writers, Scots scholars. So having been greatly honored for what's, called, what's flatteringly called a lifetime's achievement, looking back, the rising gen generation, it's pretty, it's very, very clear that Scots is in very good hands. So thank you all very much. Young Scots Writer of the Year, sponsored by Education Scotland, is the next award to give. This award was a competition where young folk pit in there, writing inspired by the phrase Lang may your lum reek. There was hundreds of cracking entries, and for out of them, the judges picked the submission for Lucy and Hope Freeman as their winner. Here is a video of that winning work. The Dale and Michael Scott. There was once a tour house in Balweedy. On the inside, it stood on a craig. On the other, a rolling bray that fell away to the sea. In it laid Michael Scott, the wizard of Balweedy. The nearby folk of Kirkgaudy wondered at his lang hair and Turkish goons. None of them kent where he came fae, but they trid that he was hairless. The grand around his tour was growthy, and their coos and sheep fed there. The harbour he had built them was safe and boats caught money fish. Michael Scott had been a deal thrown out of heaven by St Michael, but he had repented, taking St Michael's name in the name of the Lord that had redeemed him through hard work. Scott had mined ilk stain on his tour house and laid ilk break upon itself, and then he had smote the yard to make the craig on Wilkie's house stand. He had planted the trees that drap at the branches for the local folk's firewood. He had laid out the bray where his sheep and cows grazed, and he aired it the tides of the sea to keep the fishing boat safe. And say so it was for hundreds of years. Then St Michael throwed out another deal out and other good place. This deal landed at the dope end of the craig. He scrambled up the craig and called out to Scott, Let me bide in your tour and what cantrips we will mark. We will gar storms and watch them rummage. They will blow down the lums so the folk will gel and dash the boats so that no fish will be catched. 
Raw, said Michael Scott. But today this, we mourn he rapes, say that we can pull the looms down the kinch the boats and pull them out to the rocky bree. Come with me to the foreland and burl that rape for the sond. Then you can bide with me. Scott pinted down the brae to where the gows were circling o'er the sea. And the deal gaed there to stare on his dark, near realising he had been gagged. As soon as the drowy sun dried, the rape fell apart. The deal roked on and on for many years till his e'en began to droop and he went at the sun with Mac a saft bed. Just for a moment he tell his cell, sign I will get on with my task. And so lay his e'en shut. While he was sleeping, the folk of Kirkcaldy started building their houses on the sand to cure the dale for his head to his feet. And to this day, Kirkcaldy has cried the lang tune, and it trakes after the foreland where the dale I sleeps could a blow, warmed by the fisher folk's fires. Folk of Kirkcaldy, lang may your lums weak, to keep the dale asleep he is bed, say no trouble may come o'er tune. That's just cracking, that's just cracking. Well done to Lucy and Hope Freeman there. Now, all the teachers in the room, all the schools in the room, Abdi with Burns in their life at home, that same competition reopens this autumn. So make sure they get their entries into it and they could be getting their award this time next year. Just keep an eye out on scotslanguageawards.com for mayor info. I can't believe it, we've only two awards left to give you. Media Person of the Year and Scots Writer of the Year. Before we get to them, let's hear penultimate performance of the evening. Welcome back to the stage, Victoria McNulty. Woo! Hi, next time if I wear heels, I'll sit in the front. So I'm going to try something. Um, Hamisa Ariest, Hami Ho Toili Che Abiv and Shaw and Ocht. Can you buy that? Can you buy that? I don't The reason I wanted to do that is because I want to celebrate the um, linguistic diversity in Scotland tonight. And to me, this is about language rights and about kind of just showing Scotland for what it is. And I hear a lot of people kind of saying, you know that. Scots is a true language of Scotland, and I think, do you know what? No, because I'm from a diverse community where it's no more true than French or Farsi or Gaelic or English or anybody else that people speak around about me. And actually, what it's about is actually having everybody stand equally to each other and having it represented. And uh, the poem I'm about to do is a bit about this, but for like an Irish diaspora perspective. Because um, I started performing around about the time of the independence referendum. A lot of people were using Scots in their poetry. And I was just like, I don't know, is this my language? What is this? And I had to kind of digest that, and it was part of that sort of conversation. And I was watching a poet in a pub, and that's kind of where it starts. So I saw him in the back room. His frail horns and words didn't fly. They were made afloat when he signed a sinking. And they hung in that ale-stained air, that favoured Scots frame fractures of feelings and then far-flung travels. Am I obliged to write in this mother tongue? Because it's adopted, really, by boatmen and famine-bent workers whose verbs and nouns counted their ways down family lines in abandoned towns. You see, the road for Guidor is shelves and long, but the sentiment's strong in the pubs and terraces that my friends frequent whose Sassanac names but emerald hearts stand apart for these slave ships and bonds that built Scotland, our foundations forced in the bones of this empire's song. You see, they made her. My forefathers fought her battles. They built her brick by brick and connected track by iron track. They filled her tenements with life and in her shipyards with sarcasm and laughter. And then in the midst of discontent, she bore me. No, I love, she was a mother that moulded and broke me. She bound me up and thrust me out. Immersed in her waterway, she drowned me with foreigners and thinkers. So whose pen tells her freedom? Whose lips dare not speak her tongue? She cast me out the gardens to rot in her dole cues and her dank schemes. You see, I was a wander team. 
And I still deny her and all that short bread pomp. So this is why I write, not for islands, oil, or troops, those bonny glens and lowland stoops. Nah, for Gallagher's, Connolly's, O'Hara's, and Donahue's, who carved the rock on which she stood. So together we all stand new, wrapped in her cloak, a salt tire blue, but freedom has no native tongue, nor binds no ethnic glue. Our bonds are all built in the steel and in the stone, and that's the bedrock of Bonnie Scotland. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to continue that sentiment actually with a poem I wrote really early on when I started performing poetry and I do it every time I stand on a stage and I'm going to continue to do it every time that I stand on a stage until I don't need to say it anymore because it's been a hard, hard summer for Glaswegians and you'll get what I mean in a minute. A thousand flood could have burst the banks of the Clyde each day in 1848. Had they no beer of people? You see, the undead sailed for coffins, for dairy. And an Irish fever spilled for the foil to boil the banks with typhoid. With the young who scratched with fleas, they starved in rats to be sacked and abandoned in Scotland slums. And they were feared and they were greeted by no one. When my family arrived in Scotland, they didn't flee famine but civil war. Their guilt up was already black with Angorta more. Their names were warning signs on windows. And then no work or trade gave way to forgotten faiths and altered names. And then just tags, a terrier, terrorist, and tag. The Christ coffins are no made of mahogany today. Their tarpaulin and waves, no Kilkenny's mass graves, but the beds of the Aegean Sea. Road for Damascus stacked with similarities who even Saul could see. Flotsam children lined beaches, their flesh all bloated and grey like typhus. Their parents' skeleton faces lined security gates and fences with wires poked with frail famine hands and lips stitched and stomach pitted as Joe McDonnell or Bobby Sands. Then they want me to say that they're no like us. They don't belong like us. Nah. I can never forget that my Scotland is cut for refugees. You know how I'm privileged because my sisters made their journeys for me. So as a child, I watched for couch and TV, miles for pipe bombs and peace walls, and I will not fall silent. I stand tall. And I'll stand proud and I'll stand in solidarity with the displaced peoples now residing in Scotland. Thank you. We're just waiting for Iona Fife to come up and present the award. <laughs> Please welcome Iona Fife to the stage. So I'm delighted to be here to present the Media Person of the Year Award. Now, our media has changed over the years. When I was growing up, I guess we didn't hate TikTok until I became about 12. And ever since then, we've been plagued by it. But I must admit, the why that media has changed has actually helped the Scots language flourish, grow, and be more mobile than it ever has before. Nowadays, we've got folk learning the lead via online sources. Some good, some nae as good. We've got folk fae Israel, fae Australia, fae America, fae out of the world learning the Scots language. This is good. Back 50 year sign, we didn't hate this. 
So as many folk think that Twitter is the deal, TikTok's also near for good. Where are you doing? Um, <laughs> I think it's a really good thing, and I think that actually allows folk over the last 18 months to connect with one another. So I'm delighted to present the award, and um, I didn't actually hear uh, a, a nominees, right? Nominees. <clears throat> Alistair Heather. <laughs> Len Penny. <laughs> Littlest Chicken. <laughs> Mark Thompson. <laughs> and you're all right. Um, I, I was put up here in order to make sure that Len and Ali wouldn't beat each other up. Um, but actually, I'd like to announce that neither of them have actually won, apart from... Joy is actually going to come and open the, <laughs> the, the thing. So, Maggie. If it wasn't odd enough coming in as a Gaelic speaker, it is definitely odd now. Ask you, Shafir Uramahan. It's a real, real pleasure to be here and be celebrating all things language and culture. As a Gaelic speaker, you don't need to tell me the importance of doing that and speaking your own language and being proud of it. And I really feel a genuine honour to be here tonight. It feels like this is such a wonderful community. And um, yeah, it's really, really lovely to be part of that and to get to also open a spangly envelope at the same time. So, without further ado, and on behalf of the Dictionaries of the Scots Language, the winner is Littlest Chicken. <laughs> Joy. Littlest Chicken is not very good at the admin, okay? Right, he's a great lad, great to be on the sesshui, but can he open an email to save his life? <laughs> As a result of that, he has now sent in a video. But he has sent me an Instagram of what he would like to say, and I will henceforth read what he's going to say. <clears throat> I'm after sorry I couldn't make it. Thank you very much to the Language Awards for the nomination. If I win, Iona's going to collect the award on my behalf and then buy Abdi a drink. <laughs> I raise a glass to you all for Glasgow Tune, although I would like to point out that I am face Tran Rar. <laughs> Eat the rich, gay rights, lang my your bum reek. Keek! <laughs> I also want to thank Abdi that's followed my journey online for their support and love. You've made a big difference to a wee man for Stranraer. Biggest love, Littlest Chicken. Aww. Ladies and gentlemen, Abdi, we're finally here. We're at our final award of the night. <laughs> Absolutely. So before we get to that, let's hear a big round of applause for all the nominees. Hi. And then another even louder for all the winners. Neuter. Continue. Stop doing that. <laughs> Neuter final award is Scots Writer of the Year. The nominees are Alan Bissett, <laughs> Anna Stewart, <laughs> Colin Barnett, <laughs> and Victoria McNulty. To present the award, please welcome your new Scots Screever for the National Library of Scotland, Alison Miller. Hello there again. Not many people know that Screever in Arcadian means a howling gale, so that's what, that's what I prefer to be, and that's why I came down in last night, howling gale. Uh, I'm, it's, I'm here representing the National Library of Scotland today as a Orkney Screever, um, and I'm delighted to read the winner, who is 
Victoria McNulty. <laughs> speech because I didn't think I would win, to be honest, I was just here for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know that I've won this um, for a project that I started last year called Exiles, uh, which is a poetry book published by Speculative Books and then um, made into a film. And uh, to be honest, I just kind of want to say that I, I wrote it, but it was made wonderful by the people who made it with me. So it was made wonderful by Kevin Gilday. And, David Heyman Jr. and Callum Baird and Stephen and Fraser for fair play. And that's probably why I'm stoning here tonight. And I kind of, I want to thank anybody who's platformed me. There's a few of in the room, Alistair, Hamish McDonald, and there's probably Mayor and Erin, and my partner Mark and my family. And I just, I, it's a big thing, I don't get voted for anything. So <laughs> it will go in the mantelpiece for a long time coming. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Incredible. 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 Sensational. So, so all we're here today is one final performance and say a few words of thanks. Thanks to Hands Up for Chad for organising this evening. <laughs> to the Gardine Theatre for hosting us. To all the sponsors, to Creative Scotland for giving us the sell to day this year in, year out. Um, cheers to us all in the room for being with us, eh? Bit of fun, out the house. Cheers to us all at Hayden for sending us your messages and reading them backstage. Hundreds of really positive things coming in. Sensational. Well, that's us away the new. We'll see you all next year then. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll find a performance for Ellie Beaton and Gilly O'Flaherty with Cameron Nixon. Good night, Abdi. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. If you thought it was bad enough, we're all on stage now and going to give you one final song for the evening. It's been a pleasure for us all to perform for you this evening live in concert. And we're going to finish off with a North East farm worker song called The Term Time. And I'm hoping you can all join in on the refrain. And a wee vote of thanks now from Ellie. We would just like to thank uh, Simon for Hands Up for Trad. And I've just came that they've done the Hail Thank Yous, but... Simon for Hands Up for Trad, the lovely folk on the soon and left, Mark and us, Luke, Bonnie and soon Bonnie, um, the folk running the live stream, and the nominees and TSR are for giving us a gig. So, <laughs> long needed. Feel free to join in. They sing about the broomy law, they sing a land's a lamb, but the best song that ever sung was sung about the term. The term time is coming, lads, and we will all win free. And we, the weary farmers, again we win our fee. Come, a radium, a rowdo, radium, a re, radium, a rowdo, valley. First there comes the market, and then there comes the term. So why you weary? Had some whips at all their arms. They don't and ride on horseback oh, when they get the firm. Their boots are glad and glass red and spurs up on the heels. Although you got the country room, you win a fence. Six shields come, a radium, a rowdo, radium, a re, radium, a rowdo, falali. He put this hand in his boots and he'll boot a shilling. And they'll say, sellers, I'm just scarce, either the and villain. They'll tell ye every jot of work that ye take perform. But lads, when you're under them, you'll stand the rage and storm. Come, a radium, a rowdo, radium, a re, radium, a rowdo, falali. Fa 
On cold kale and patties, they feed you like a pig While they sit at the tea and toes, or hurl at the gig The diet how it affects them, and then do also say Come on, my lads, you'll get your rest when lying in the clay Come, my laddie, um, my loud, oh, laddie, um, my dee Raddie, um, my loud, oh, fa-la-lee A new my song is ended, and a warning tack for me and we the weary farmers be sure and in our feet Come a raddy um a row, thou raddy um a ree Raddy um a row, thou fa-la-lee Come a raddy um a row, thou raddy um a ree Raddy um a row, thou fa-la-lee Come a raddy um a row, thou raddy um a ree Thank you very much and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.